All right, so in today's video, we are going to be looking at one common mistake that people make with every single defender. I'm going to go over all these defenders, one mistake each that I notice people make. Let's get into it. All right, now starting off with Wamai, this one is very simple. The most common mistake I notice is with the Wamai placement. Way too often, I'll see people like just place it like right here or place it at the bottom of the window. And here's the thing. The correct way that you want to place it is always going to be at the top right or top left, depending on where it is, right? In this case, the best spot would be the top right, because if I'm playing here, I don't want the nade to come near me. So placing it like right here would be a terrible idea, because if someone shoots a nade in here or a flash, it's going to come right next to me. On top of that, if you have it like down here, any barbed wire, traps, or anything you have is now going to get destroyed if it's a grenade. Now for Solus. The most common mistake I noticed with Solus is really during the prep phase. This is the only operator that you can have the excuse of not reinforcing. Once the round starts, your main goal is, yeah, maybe reinforce one wall, you know, make a rotate if you want. But your main goal is simply going to be walking around and looking for drones. You need to simply be running around and drone hunting. Drones are so important and so are prep phase drones. People will set them up in spots that they plan to push. So one, you can gain a ton of information if you notice where they're being set up. And two, you can immediately destroy them before they can't even get set up, which will then help you on later on in the round. Now for Malusi, this one is very simple. A common mistake I notice is with the Malusi placement. Way too often people will place it like, right here or you know just right in front of them and the problem with this is they walk into this then they, and they could just shoot down let me show you a better example if i were to take my malusi and i place it right here instead what this is going to do is instead of them being able to walk in look down and shoot it right and then be able to look back up they now have to walk in completely turn their body around so they are completely exposed to any angle over here so they have to completely turn their body around, shoot this, then whip all the way around. So it just allows you to, as a defender, play off of the Malusi way better because now when I hear that and I hear that, you know, he's going to go and shoot it, I can swing and he's not even going to be facing me. So just like stop placing the Malusis in these like just wide open spots where it's just so easy for them to walk in, shoot, look back up. You want to place them in spots where they have to kind of turn away from the main point of action and not just directly in front. Now for Vigil. This one is simple. Way too often I notice it's like the, the usage of the actual vigil, right? So if somebody uses their vigil when they're flanking, if somebody does go on their drone, they're gonna immediately know that there's a vigil now flanking them. Compared to if you just simply go for a flank and then just hope for the best, right? Don't, you know, hopefully there's no drones there. They can't see you, whatever it may be. That's your whole goal. You want to wait until you already get spotted to then use your vigil. Because if I am flanking and I use my vigil, let's say for whatever reason, this guy over here decides going to his drone, he's setting it down the hatch. He's not even setting it over here. He's gonna see a vigil scanner and immediately be like, oh my God, we might get flanked, let's watch. In comparison to, okay, I'm flanking, right? Then a drone sees me, I shoot the drone, and now they're gonna try and drone me out, whatever it may be, I'm invisible. This allows them or me to get aggressive. I can take map control. If I'm fighting somebody on this door in my vigil, they cannot see me on my vigil. I can shoot the drone. You know, you wanna wait to use your vigil and not give away your position or kind of let them be scared or worried about you being on the vigil. Same with this, for example, if I'm hiding right here, I'm not gonna sit here and vigil scan. Why would I do that? They're gonna know there's a vigil in here. So what I would do is I would wait until if I do get spotted, then I add, then I, you know, I turn on my vigil, I can start to get aggressive. No matter what, if they drone in here, they won't know where I am. Especially with the buff, you can shoot now while in the vigil. The only thing that will show is is the, the little like uh, hologram of you. Now for Fenrir, this one's pretty simple. Uh, I think the biggest mistake I notice is people are not actively changing their actual Fenrir minds, right? So like way too often they'll set them and then it'll just be that, they'll leave it at that. When in reality, if you play by the site or if you get comms on where people are pushing, right, you want to always be actively changing it, right? So if, if nobody's pushing this window, but they're pushing this far side where they're pushing attic, I need to always be like paying attention to where they're pushing and actively changing it to that. So literally just like, okay, nobody's pushing the, you know, the back. There's one, they're always pushing the front right now. Let me switch these to the front. Okay, one's pushing the back. They're probably not pushing attic anymore. Let me switch this, switch it over to the back so that way I don't get flanked, right? Just always pay attention to where they are pushing and actively change your Fenrir minds based off of that. Now for Mira, I think the most common mistake I noticed with Mira is people are always so quick to like just initially see someone and try to shoot. When in reality, like here's the thing, think of it as an attacker, right? If you see a Mira as an attacker, 
if you're trying to cross, you're trying to walk over, your immediate reaction as an attacker is going to be to like kind of like pre-fire the mirror right away just in case they swing, whatever whatever it may be. Like if you're walking, you're going to kind of pre-fire it. So wouldn't it make more sense for, let's say, let's use this for an example. We have somebody playing here. Okay, there's a mirror right here. Wouldn't it make more sense to swing this guy when he's right here kind of getting ready to deal with this guy when he's not really looking at you rather than, you know, attempting to almost die because most likely he's going to try and pre-fire you when he's out there. That's just one example though. That doesn't happen all the time. So even if, let's say, there was nobody bunker, I don't want to immediately swing, like, right away. I kind of want to, like, you know, wait, kind of make him scare and whatever it may be. And when I'm swinging, don't be afraid to swing bottom left. The predictable swing like this is going to get you killed way too much. And I'm not saying to never do this. I do this all the time, too. I'll see someone swing. Like, especially if they have, like, an ash or they're trying to clear out this mirror. I'm going to swing this guy immediately. Sometimes you have to. But just don't do it all the time. Just try and kind of scare the shit out of the guy. And whether it might be, if you have to swing, swing low. You're trying to be more unpredictable. It's the whole point of this. Next tip is simply going to be with Cade. And that is stop just throwing a Cade like this, where it's so easy to be shot by a Twitch drone, to be shot from a window, to be shot if they come in, to be shot, whatever it may be. There are so many spots that, for example, you can literally like place like them in just weird spots. For example, I can throw one right here like this to where it's not as easy to be seen from below. And that will still get that wall. Or I can come in here somewhere where it cannot be shot at from below. I could throw it like this. And now that will get the wall. Now we have a much more hidden one. Now I have a video on my TikTok of like every single case spot you should know. You can check that out. Or even if you don't know these spots, let's say you should have like a default wall. You have a revolver. You can simply just go like this. Place it in the floorboards. This will help you from Twitch drones. This will help you from people coming in. Like they will not be able to see it as much. Obviously you can get destroyed from below, but for that case, there you go. Or just look at the environment around you. I could, like I would say even throwing one right here like this could be better because then the Cade or the Twitch won't see it as much when they first come in or the attackers won't see it as much if they, you know you have holes here or whatever it may be. It makes it much harder for them to see. Just try not to throw it. Like if you have to, you have to. But a lot of the times there's other spots that you can use instead. Location now here. for pulse. I think this is the common mistake that I noticed. It's for example, like the round starts. Immediately you're gonna go and you're gonna re you know, reinforce. Now I'm not saying not to ever reinforce. That's not what I'm saying. But most likely if I'm playing pulse, I'm gonna tell my teammates, hey, I'm not reinforcing. What I'll do immediately is I will go jump and I will go and hide. I will literally go and hide somewhere. Because what this is going to do is if the drones do not see me, right? Like I sprint right away when the round starts. Now I am hidden. They do not know if there's a pulse compared to if I'm sitting in sight, I'm reinforcing, doing what I should be doing. Now they're like, okay, there's a pulse. We have to make sure we clear below. And I'm not saying they'll never clear below. You know, some people do. They go below. But now they see the pulse and they're like, okay, we have to do this right now. And a little extra tip, whenever you see somebody, don't just immediately throw it right there. Throw it a little bit ahead, right? So for example, it helps better if you know the architecture of the map. But I know this is bathroom right here. So if I see somebody right here, most likely he's going to go to this over here. So if I see him right there, I'm going to throw it right here like this. Because even if he stands still, it's going to kill him. If he walks forward, it's going to kill him. So just start learning the architecture more as well. And just, you know, throw a little bit ahead of the person. Now for Doc. It's kind of hard to make a mistake with Doc because you're simply just healing yourself and your team. But I think if I had to really nitpick one, I'd really say not overhealing enough when you're taking gunfights. Like something that's so good with Doc is if I'm getting ready to take a gunfight, right? I can simply just overheal, put myself from 125 to now 145, and then swing this kid. And I can just fry him because I now have more health than he has, no matter what. I don't care if I'm literally at 125. If I'm getting ready to swing this, bro, I am dock healing, and I'm committing, and I'm cooking somebody because I have 145 health. Obviously, don't use all of them on yourself. But if you're getting ready to take a gunfight, especially in a clutch situation, bro, you're in a 1v2. If you got two left, overheal on that bitch, bro, and swing that kid. Now for a lesion. This one is pretty simple. Obviously, ever since they nerfed him, placing a lesion mine down like this is a bad idea, right? Like, I notice that way too often. People will just place these, like, wide in the open. Sometimes it's not terrible, but here's the thing. Pay attention to this. This has a radius. So if he walks right here, He's dead or he's hit by it. You know what I mean? It's going to activate it. I mean, if he walks right here like this and sneaks around it, obviously it won't activate. But just pay attention to the radius. You can really double up on it to make sure they literally can basically hit both. And they don't even see that coming around the corner, right? Like they're not going to see that. They walk in the middle, immediately they're cooked. So just start paying attention more to the radius and placing them more on the side rather than placing it right in the middle where the attacker is simply going to go, oh, a legion mine and shoot it. Now for a castle. I see way too many mistakes for castle and as do it is barricade. The biggest thing I see that I notice is people will like barricade off 
things that will literally screw you over, okay? Like, imagine defending top floor, and you barricade this door off. Why is this horrible? Because now, you're basically, like, eliminating a spot where the attackers have to check. So if they take map control, they only have to focus on these two things. So you're basically denying your defenders from being able to rotate and apply this like pressure that's not even there, right? And I'm not saying to never have it on doorways. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. For example, this downstairs bomb site, having a castle right here is not terrible, right? Because you're able to kind of make that fake pressure still or apply that pressure still as a defender by making holes in the wall and making other stuff. So just pay attention to where you're placing these castles and just generally think like, okay, I, I'll castle this, but I'm not gonna castle this because with this castle now, this blocks off this side, but still allows my defenders to rotate in and out of sight. It allows my defenders to get angles on the attackers and kind of forces the attackers to go this way unless they wanna waste utility on that door and waste time punching it. And it, it doesn't block anybody off or make it easier for the attackers to push. Now with Clash, the biggest mistake that I notice is, there's really two, and it's like people get way too aggressive with Clash and will use the ability way too much. Like basically what I mean by that is like, I'm not gonna sit here and stand here like this or just allow them to push me in, right? Your main goal with Clash is just gonna be to suppress them, right? So no problem doing this. This is not getting too aggressive, right? But once they start to get super close, you need to back up. Like people like, I will, bro, people will stand here and just go like this. You want to like give them the map control, then push them back. Give them the map control, then push them back. Like get aggressive, absolutely. But you need to be more mobile with your clash device. You need to be moving around with it. You need to, you know, deny the map control, give the map control. When you're giving the map control, you're really just recharging your shield and you're basically making it so that way they can't melee you. Okay, like you literally just want to kind of more go in a, a back and forth method. Like I said, get super aggressive, get in their face, you know, deny the map control, but do not let them get close to you. Now with a zombie, the biggest mistake that I noticed is I feel like people just feel like they have to throw all their zombies down, like, and that's it. Like, and they never like pocket in the zombie. Pocketing in a zombie can help you so much. Like, I'm not saying to not use your zombies. Set up the, set up the site, you know, throw one here. Throw one here, you know, place one on blue stairs, place one on main stairs, right? But save one for you. The amount of times that I will notice that people will just try, you know, just throw all of them just to throw them down. When in reality, if I'm playing, right, it's like late round. I'm sitting here. The time is ticking. They're pushing the back. I throw when I cover the door. Now that's wasting more time. Not only is that wasting more time, it's allowing me to get the hell out of the area if I need to. Like, even if I'm roaming too, bro. Like, if I'm getting pinched or pushed on a single doorway, I can sprint. I can throw one and I can get away like crazy. And then, you know, they have to punch it. They have to, you know, do all that stuff, right? So just, it allows you to like use them late round on doorways. Use them late round on the wall. For a maestro, this one is simple. We're going to talk about maestro placement. Like, bro, like, I've, like one mistake I noticed is like people will place these in the most like common spots or ability to get like shot or hit. Like if you're placing one right here, like, oh, I can watch the defuse, right? But somebody can just come up to it and just melee it so easy or even just shoot it so easy with like with like a Zofia Ash or whatever it may be or just shoot the bubble when it gets shot so easily when there's so many like more spots that you can do like a little like tip that I can give you for example on this common spot where people plant bro I can place one right here like this and this would allow me to still see the default plant spot all while they can't see it so they come in they can't shoot it they can't see it and I'm sitting here and I can just spray someone's feet with it, right? So just when you're placing your maestros down, like obviously it's not gonna be that every single time. Sometimes, you know, you just have to place them more down in the middle, but place them in spots where you can get more intel with them and they're not so easy to melee. Now for Mozzie. One of the biggest mistakes that I notice a lot with Mozzie is that people will get this drone, right? And they will just drive it like right back at the attackers. Like they know they just got Mozzie pested. They're gonna be on the lookout for the drones. The better thing that you should be doing is once you get a Mozzie drone, immediately set that up as a, a valve cam, as a prep drone, right? Let's say during the prep phase, I get a drone. I'm on Oregon. I'm like, okay, well, they, you know, they normally push here. So how can I set this up? I'm going to try and find a spot that I can now hide this drone that will give me the advantage, right? I might even hide it back here. I might save it for later on. Just stop being like so aggressive with these drones. Let's say I get this drone and I'm like, okay. What's the common spot people plant? Well, they always plant here. I can set my drone up right here. Now with this, okay, I'm inside attic. Let me see, is anyone in the breach? No, somebody's on the bomb. Okay, get off my drone, swing, no he's there. Just like start using your drones and setting them up in the common default plant spot and in spots they push. Now for Thunderbird, this one is simple. I think what I notice way too often is bro, the placement of these Thunderbirds are horrible. 
people would take a Thunderbird and they like place it down right here. And it's like placing it down in spots where like attackers can easily get access to it. Like if you're placing Thunderbirds down where once that person dies, it's so easy for them to get that Thunderbird, get health, that is terrible. What I would always recommend doing is let's say Oregon, for example, I'll place them like, okay, one right here, you know, place them in the closet where people can one easily access pretty safely. So like I'll place like two in here or two, even if, for example, you're like, okay, well, I want my guy who's on pillar to have health if needed. Well, place them in spots where they can easily be destroyed if that person dies. For example, that's not a terrible one because now the guy playing pillar gets health and the worst case scenario, if he dies there, oh, okay, I shot it. I can destroy it. Like you want to just think about your, your T-bird placement more instead of just placing them in these spots where you're like allowing the attackers to just be able to get free health if needed. Now for Warden, the biggest common mistake I noticed, people forget to use his ability. And no, I'm not talking about the 1.5. I'm talking about this thing right here. I swear I have seen so many people get flashed and then just go, like bro, you are Warden, play in that flash. Especially if they have a smoke, you need to start playing more in the flash and more in the smoke. Like if I notice that they're yigging something, bro, I'm gonna get aggressive because now it's basically a one-on-one -on -one in that situation if it's in a tight area. Ying's the only person who's not going to be blinded, and two, I can then see that. Especially if they have a smoke. If you see they ever throwing smokes, you need to start playing more aggressive. Oh, now no, for Echo. The most common mistake that I notice is people will take their Echo drone, right? And like, let's say they have it set up right here. They'll just leave it like this. And like, they, they never are hiding or moving their drones properly. So here's the problem with this. Yeah, I can watch the defuse, but what's going to happen is they're going to send their drone in here, right? They're going to immediately know where the echo is. They're going to ping it and probably wall bang it. Or when they hop in, immediately shoot it. Compared to if I throw it, for example, on these vents, right? I throw it on top of something. Now the drone is much less likely to see this, right? So now late round, when I actually need it, it's not destroyed. I could be like, oh, they're planting. Look at this. Jump up here. Boom. Get them down, right? So just like start hiding your drones better. Like I said, they don't even need to be like sitting up like this. Just hide them better. Now for Frost. I think the most common mistake that I noticed with Frost is people never play off their Frost mats. Like, let me show you. Think of it like this. Like a Frost mat, if somebody's on that window, is almost a free kill for you for the most part. Because what's going to happen, if I play off it correctly, is you want this guy to hop in. Because if he hops in, he has two options. Let's say even if he knows you're there. He can either hop in and shoot you. And then if he does that, he's in the Frost mat. Or... Hop in, look down to shoot the frost mat. Now when he does that, you can swing him. So it's like, you're basically trading something off and like you want to be able to play by this frost mat. Like do not be afraid, especially now that they can self revive, please God, play by them because they can self revive out of them now. But they're still insanely good when played off of them because it still takes them down. So you want them to like, like, okay, he hops in, he goes to shoot the frost mat, I swing out. I get a free kill because he's looking down at the frost map. Now for cap can. I think the biggest mistake that I noticed with cap can is people will place them like on the complete wrong side of the doorway. Now, how do you tell what's the right side to place it? Let's say I wanted to place it on this door. Most likely they're going to spawn here, meaning they're going to come up this way and come over onto this door. So placing it on this side would more be the wrong way instead of I'd rather want to place it on this side because you want to think of where the attacker is coming from that they won't see that. Now, of course, they can repel up here and they can come this way and then see it. But one, this also blends in a little bit better and most likely they're coming from this way. Same with this, for example. Okay, they're coming down this hallway. Placing one right here would not be a terrible idea. Sometimes I may even do both sides just in case, right? I'll place one like this. So that way they come around this corner they're like, oh, there's a cap can there, which they actually might not even see because who's expecting a cap can there? But still, they're like, oh, we're coming this way. Boom. Like, you wouldn't want to place it on this side because they're going to be expecting to face this side. They're not going to look over here. They're going to be coming around this corner facing this way. So just whenever you're placing these cap can traps down, just think of where the attacker would be facing most likely. Now with smoke, I think the most common mistake I noticed is people are never watching the time or using it correctly, right? Like... You have to understand something, right? So this smoke grenade is going to last 10 seconds. So this means I have 30 seconds of time to deny. So you want to always, instead of just throwing it all the time, just like at the most random spots, just pay attention to the actual time management. Now, if you're about to die, don't be like, oh, well, it's not the last 30 seconds. Like, no, obviously throw it. But if you're ever deciding like, hmm, when should I throw my smoke? Just know they last 10 seconds each. 
So you want to waste as much time as you possibly can. A little extra thing that I noticed is people never actually play in their smokes, right? So like, people will just throw the smoke and just like, not think anything of it. But like, your smoke, you can quite literally blow this open and play right here. And then swing off of it. Like, because you are smoke. So you can get aggressive with it. Like, you could throw a smoke like this, blow it off. They're going to be running away. You're chasing after them. Just smoking them. All right, now we have mute. Now, I feel like with mute, it's kind of hard to make a mistake with. The only thing you can really mess up is really just your placement of the mutes themselves. And you could definitely mess that up. I've seen some horrible mute placements. So one thing I would recommend is to never fuck place a, a mute jammer like this. This is horrible. I'm sure you guys know why this is horrible. Because they can just shoot it. This also is better, but it's it's still not as good. Placing it like this is not good. Because I can easily see it from here, and I'm in cover. So when you think about mute jammers, I think about two things. One, I think about, okay, can it be seen? And two, can I, I think about, am I able to kind of make the attacker have to expose himself? And here I am. If I place it on this side, I am now forcing the attacker, if he wants to shoot it, to have to expose himself here expose himself here, expose himself here, just to shoot the mute jammer. So it's much better than placing it here or here. Now for Tachanka. I feel like a common mistake that I've noticed when I ever see people play Tachanka is they will either like peek a doorway with the Tachanka or like just shoot it like this. When in reality, bro, this thing can go so far. Like people will die like, oh, I died with my Tachanka out. How? I could literally be all the way back here and shoot this thing, and I'm still stopping them from walking in. I could go even further back and shoot this thing, and I'm still stopping them from all the way back here. So, like, people play way too close with the Tachanka, when in reality, like, you can literally shoot this thing so far. Like, the distance on this thing is insane. So, stop playing so aggressively close with it and go further back. And also, bounce it. You can literally bounce these things like a maniac. You do, you could safely do this. Like, Tachanka can, can be very good on many sides. Like, this side he's insane on. Because you could launch this thing and get the default plant spot from so many spots. I'm completely safe behind this bomb. And I'm going to bounce it off the ceiling like this. Completely safe. Look, I'm all the way back here. Look. Still landed in the spot that I needed to land in. Touching the wall, okay? Still landed in the spot. Okay, so my firebolt... Hit over there and bounce off the wall from all the way <laughs> back here. That is 33 meters. I was still able to stop them from planting right there from all the way back here. Now, obviously, you're not going to do all the time. But I'm just saying, like, you don't have to be so close with it. Now for Valkyrie. I think the biggest, like, mistake that I notice is people will place these in those pointless spots. Or they'll place so many in sight. And it's like, listen, there is no problem with having, like, maybe one about cam in sight there's no problem with that but like that's at the most that you should do i don't even do that like the, when you think about putting valk cams down you want to think of how you're gonna play off of them right so for example i will throw one uh right here for example right now i tend to you know i want to hold off library so i'm gonna hold this off reinforce this whatever it may be you know having a zombie play in here but now this valk cam will now aid anybody playing in here because I can see if they hop in, I can see if they take me in lobby control, I can see if they're coming up the steps, whatever it may be. I am helping my roamers with them. So I think like always just forcing them to kind of be in sight or in the most random spots is just like not good. Or even if you're like solo queuing and you're like, okay, well, I don't know where my team is going to play. Place them in spots that people have to enter into to then get sight control. Like for example, if I throw one up here, let's just say it's not the greatest spot, but I'm just showing you. Placing one anywhere in solar is going to avoid them from getting into the site without me knowing. Because now if I die, I can watch stuff off the site, and I'm not like, oh, I have a site cam. Hey guys, they re they're in sight. Rather than being like, hey guys, they're pushing solar, then my teammates can prepare for that, they can rotate, they can go to that area, rather than just giving them a call, hey guys, they're on site. Like, then they have to quickly try and fix it. And it's like, it's just way too late of a call out. I think you gain more from having the Valk cams off site, as well as having them assist your roamers now for cav okay i have two things for this one just like i mentioned earlier with pulse the second i'm playing cav i am not reinforcing i am sprinting and i am hiding as far away as i can because if the defenders or the attackers see that they have a cav they are going to 
take it, they're going to play it much differently, and they're going to make sure they draw out everything. I'm sure you guys know, if, if you're attacking and you see they have a cav, you're like, yo, guys, make sure we draw everything out, uh, watch out for a cav. You play it differently. It's just the reality of how it is. So hiding immediately is going to help you a lot instead of sitting upstairs reinforcing. Another common mistake is like people will force an interrogation. Way too often I'll people be like, oh my god, I'm down. Run over and go and interrogate. And it's like, bro, if you get someone down, you have to think, okay, listen, you don't hear anything, interrogate. There is no problem with downing someone and just getting the kill because now you're going to waste even more time they're going to try to hunt you down. Not saying not to go for interrogations, but you have to make sure that it is clear. Like, do not force an interrogation because when somebody gets interrogated, bro, they're going to try and sprint at you full speed and try and wall bang you and try and sh floor bang you, whatever it may be. Now for alibi. I feel like the biggest mistake people make with alibi is they'll place her down in the worst possible spots. Like, bro, nobody is falling for some of these spots. Instead, what you should be doing is forcing people to go through them so that way it automatically pings it. Let me show you. Placing an alibi like this is one, if they shoot open this barricade, it's gonna ping them, okay? Two, if they decide to hop into this window, they are going to get pinged. So it is the same thing as them hitting a lesion mine, same thing as hitting whatever, you know, an Ella mine. You're gonna get that notification and they're gonna be pinged. And you can place them on so many windows. Like whether they shoot open the window, whether they hop in the window. Alibi can be so good for like kind of stopping the rush or more of like not allowing your team not to know. Because if, if they shoot open this barricade, they're marked. They hop in, they're marked. And you can play off of them, right? They hop in, they're marked, wall bang. Like you can just play off your alibis way better and see a much higher success with them rather than placing them in like random spots. Now for Goyo, I think the biggest mistake that I notice is people like kind of always think like, okay, well, we have to wait till it's the end to, to use this. Like I, like I see a lot of people just not shooting a Goyo canister when there'll be like a heavy push over here. They'll be like, oh, like, I'm gonna save that. Like, what are you saving that for? I mean, yeah, you could save it for the last like 30 seconds because in case you don't know, each canister lasts 25 seconds. However, if you're like fighting for your life over here, simply like if they're gonna get start to get aggressive, they're all pushing back here. Shooting a Goyo canister, blocking off a door, allows your teammates for 25 seconds to relocate, to get ready to push. And I'm not saying to not save it. Definitely time management is very important. Like if there's like 45 seconds, bro, give it a couple more seconds, wait till there's like 30, because then they'll be left at five seconds to rush the site. So absolutely, it's good to wait. But if you are getting stormed, like, like there is like five people back here and there's only one of you on the pillar and they're starting to get aggressive on you, shoot it. Because you're, you're going to give your teammates time to rotate. You're going to allow them to, to kind of like reassess the, the defense because now it's like, okay, well, they're not pushing the front. They're pushing the back. Let's more focus on the back. Now, what's a common mistake with Jaeger? I feel like it's kind of hard to make a mistake with Jaeger. I mean, you're just placing the ADSs. So just like make sure you're not placing them down in the stupidest areas. Like whenever you're placing them down, think, okay, they're going to go for this wall. Is anybody bandit tricking here? If the answer is no then back it up are there live bandits that the you know grenades can get yes okay well then place it right here is my teammate holding this right here with a rotate here yes he is okay well then let's give him an ads like i guess don't always think that you have to place them on site just always think of like okay well where are my teammates going to be holding that i should be placing these ads's down instead of okay i need to place them in site like now you can place them a little bit more off site but just place them where your teammates are going to hold now for bandit. I think the biggest mistake is people will like, one, automatically assume like, okay, well you have to bandit trick. When you have to always think when you're attempting to bandit trick, like can you safely bandit trick? Cause it's not worth your life to die trying to bandit trick. Like right here, it's probably a terrible idea to bandit trick. I would say you can try and bandit trick this wall, but if they're pushing below, bro, like run. Like do not stick, the, stick to the bandit trick. And if you ever need to understand with bandit tricking, just always think this, you're going to sit right here, okay, right in the middle, you're going to listen, get close up to it, if you hear it on your left headphone, okay, move to the left, place it down, you hear it on the right headphone, move to the right, place it down, so literally, just sit in the middle, and listen for your left and right, if you have a, a good of enough of a headset, it's so easy, just make sure you don't, like, band a trick, just to band a trick, like, make sure it's safe first, now for Oryx, I feel like the most common mistake that I noticed with Oryx is people are not using this hatch climb enough. 
Now, I would not recommend using it all the time, but there's like just so many maps that you can use it on are just it's just so beneficial, especially since they like kind of buffed it to where you climb up faster. Like look at Coastline, for example, playing and defending kitchen. Oryx is great, right? For example, I can quite literally be playing inside security, get a pick on somebody, right? Jump up here and immediately I'm chilling and I'm ready to go, right? Or they love to take top vert, right? They, they, they'll nomad off the stairs, nomad off those stairs. But in the prep phase, if I opened up this hatch down here, I can quite literally easily go for a flank just by jumping up because nobody's expecting it because no one ever does it. So like, if you are just looking on certain maps, just pay attention to the hatches and think like, can is it safe? How can I do this? Just start climbing up the hatches more. Not saying do it all the time because it can, it can get you smoked. But like, this is a perfect example. They're gonna be destroying the floor over there. They're gonna have that no matter off. No one's gonna be over here. I can climb up. Like just do the, open the hatches during the prep phase. I'm telling you, start doing it. Now for Rook, you can really only make one mistake. That's it. And that is, the second that the round starts, you are to place this down immediately. Not 10 seconds in, not after you make a rotate, no. Place it down immediately, because people are going to be waiting. There's people who have to place down utility, then go roam. People have to reinforce and go roam. Like, you want to immediately place it down. This is the your only job. That's it. So just please, the second the round starts, I don't care where it is, we're all getting the armor. It's gonna be gone anyway. Place it down immediately so that your roamers can get the Rook armor and get out. Now for Ella, I think the most common mistake is just simply going to be with your placement. Like some of these operators, the only mistake that, like with an operator base you can make is the placement. I think Ella mines can definitely be one of them. Like you don't always have to throw it above a doorway because if someone's coming in, for example, they can see this, right? Compared to like throwing it on the side right here, they can't see this unless they already hit it, right? Like they literally cannot see it unless they already walk in and they're hit by it. So I think with your placement, like you don't always need to place it above doorways. I would say there's no problem with doing that. Just like make sure with your placement, it's not exposed. Like if you're going to place it above a doorway, you wouldn't want to do this because they open the wall. They can just shoot it. So just always think about your placements and how you can like hide the Elamine to the max so that way you can hit it. And lastly, just start playing off your Elamine. Like if you're sitting in an area, when it goes off, do not be afraid to swing that guy. He, he literally can't see anything. Like he's flat, like he's he's so disorientated. You can swing him and you have such an advantage. Now with two bro, I think the biggest common mistake I've noticed, he's, he's new, but the only thing I really noticed is people like only throw it at the wall. When it's like, you don't, it's not only meant for the wall. like. Okay, so for example, if they have a nomad right here and they're all in dorms, bro, you can literally throw it at that and then swing it because it's going to freeze the any like gadgets over here. So like, I just feel like people always are so focused on, oh, the wall, the wall, the wall, which is true. You should use it on the wall most of the time. But like, do not be afraid to throw it at a, at a claymore and, and run out. Like, have a DMR with a 1.5. Like, you are able to instantly freeze everything a claim or a nomad and get aggressive with it so like you don't have to play super passive with it now for a rooney this one is like such a simple mistake that i see people make all the time like right let's say like the round started i'm like okay i'm gonna place this down i'm gonna place this down you know put my rooney gates up boom boom you know go reinforce this wall come back put up the rest of my rooney gates and it's like way too often i'll notice is let's say this rooney gate does get destroyed you want to make sure you are always placing your Rooney Gates with the top part facing you. Because if this gets destroyed, or let's say this one gets destroyed, I cannot reactivate that because I have to be able to shoot this middle part right here. So when you're placing it like this and this gets destroyed, I now cannot reactivate that. So whatever you're placing, just always think like, okay, well, can I reactivate that from where I'm at? If I need to, can I reactivate it? Because what you want to always make sure you're, you're doing is reactivating them once they go back on, if they get destroyed by a flash or grenade, whatever it may be. And another thing, don't just place these in random spots. Just always think like, where do you want to slow them down? If they are rushing, where do you want them to stop? Because they cannot rush without taking damage. They have to burn it first, which will then give you time to get ready to take that gunfight. So just think about where they're rushing, where they're pushing, and where your teammates are playing. How can you help your team out? Stuff like that. Now for Thorn, to end it all off. I think the biggest mistake that I noticed with Thorn is the placement of them, right? It's like placing one up here like this. Look at this radius. Pay attention to this. Compare to, if I throw it on the bottom, look at this radius. So you would have a much better chance of smoking somebody if you throw it more on the bottom. 
like just stop throwing it so high like this and pay more attention to like the radius of where it's at one little extra tip is you can actually play off it so like i notice way too often people will never actually play off it and like here's the thing if this goes off this guy has two options either he can sprint up if he sprints up his gun is down or he can turn around if he sprints down he's facing the other way so if i'm playing up here and this goes off i'm going to swing this I can catch that guy either sprinting at me with his gun down or sprinting away with his back to me. So, like, just don't be afraid to play off it because they have to run when they get hit by it or else they're going to die. Hopefully, this video did help. This was such a long video. My head hurts. Uh, let me know if you guys want a attacker version. I got you. But I will see y'all. Much love. Peace.